Hello and welcome back. And yes, that's right. Today we're going to talk about Synology and hard drives once again because it's very soon to be a very hot topic. Um, today we're going to talk about when, not if, Synology is going to start adding Seagate and WD drives. Now, a number of you have been in touch uh, about a recent comment that was on a Synology German video uh, where a member of the Synology Europe team responded to a comment effectively saying that the verification process is still underway. Now, this isn't news. It's not. We've known about this for a while. It's been something Synology have said very early doors that they were talking about re-verifying and passing over the verification of hard drive compatibility on their platform towards Seagate, towards WD. Now, this video is going to be me talking about a few things. Number one, it's going to be me talking about what I know about that process thus far, the good and the bad. The second thing I'm going to talk about is how Synology are going to approach this based on a myriad of off the record comments that have been passed to me by different Synology people and at their Synology Solutions event that took place yesterday. We've got a whole dedicated video about that as well. I'm not sure if that's out yet or not. I know the article is, it's linked below, blah, blah, blah. But really, this is about when not if. Now, there's going to be some of you that are going to watch this video that say, where's the proof? Show the proof. Unfortunately, most of the things I'm going to talk about now, I can't provide most of the proof because it's been provided off the record. So if you would like to call this hearsay, by all means do so. But I mean, at least take me based on the videos that I've done and the coverage that I've done of this thus far. They wouldn't say a lot of these things unless I had substantial backing off the record and people telling me stuff in order to do this. And I will highlight um, when I can uh, some of the verified stuff I've been told. So number one, Seagate and WD. Uh, from what I understand, WD are the ones that are putting up most of the fight on this. Seagate, from what I understand, has largely started verifying those drives, and that is something that is in progress, so those drives will be added. Uh, but how and when they are added is something we'll talk about in the second half of this video. But it's the WD uh, drives, and I think a lot of conflict there. I think they burnt a lot of bridges at Synology or at the very least harmed a lot of those bridges during this re-verification process, particularly when you do factor in that a Synology uh, plus series drive is a Seagate drive inside. And when you look at some of the ones like Toshiba drives there, Let's face it, Synology's enterprise grade drives, again, some of the brands do vary and it extends all the way to SSDs. I think some of the uh, SSDs that they use come from WD. Uh, but ultimately, this, this again comes back down to when, not if uh, these drives are going to be added, which brings us to the second half of the video, how it will be implemented and rolled out. And this comes from not only a lot of comments off the record, but also speaking to lots of people at Synology Solution Exhibition. I'll talk about this in a wider video very, very soon, uh, where they actually did address the subject of hard drives during their presentation. Uh, hopefully you can see something there on screen that recorded during the event. And it was, they included about two, two and a half minutes during their presentation saying they are taking user feedback on board and that verification is still ongoing. As workloads scale and data becomes even more critical, we've made the strategic decision to fully validate and support Synology drives in our solutions. This means that we take an end-to-end -end responsibility for performance, reliability and long-term availability by managing both the hardware and the software stack. We intend to show you that we can deliver Deep integration, such as real-time health monitoring, predictive risk analysis, and seamless firmware updates, all designed to reduce risk and maximize uptime. This change is not about limiting choice. It's about accountability. When you deploy a Synology solution, you can be confident that we stand behind every component and that you'll receive a system optimized for performance and reliability over its entire life cycle. And for our partners, this also means fewer unknowns in deployment and support. Greater predictability and stronger value for your customers. Together we can focus less on troubleshooting and more on helping businesses innovate secure. During the breaks, our Synology team will be available at the booths. I encourage you to come speak to us, talk to us directly if you'd like to discuss this uh, topic and understand uh, further about it. Again, how you feel about that, how much of that verification is real, 
why they couldn't just rely on a lot of, you know, up until this point, the verification of previous devices with the same hardware. What's the point of this? Is it just about the old money, money, money? We could talk about that, and we have talked about it in other videos, but still, nonetheless, there is still movement. Everything I'm seeing being indicated in the, in the background. Now, this comes down to the implementation. Now, I've had three conf slightly conflicting uh, responses to this from different sources. Most of it you can probably guess on your own, but I think we have to talk about the implementation. Uh, number one is that Synology U-turn. Synology is completely U-turn and start allowing uh, third-party uh, unverified hard drives again. They go back to the status quo, they uh, have the system so they don't update the database, but drives are listed with the whole orange and amber warnings. This is the way it was up until this point before they changed it, but it allowed people to use those other drives. Again, that would be the easiest thing to do, but it's also, I think, the hardest thing for Synology to do, because if they do that, they're effectively saying, we done effed up. Now, if they do that, of course, they could dress it up real nice. They can say, oh, we've taken the user feedback on board. It's something they did back in DSM 7.1. I talked about this in other videos. They actually did something similar to this when they rolled out the red warning in DSM 7.1, which made all unverified drives put the system in a, in a red critical state, and they ended up rolling that back based on feedback. So it'd be nice if that's the one they're doing, and that is something that has been discussed internally, and I think it is those at the very tippity top that are maybe holding out on that one. Uh, the second one is the verification of uh, WD and Seagate drives happens and they integrate it into a hard drive database update and almost certainly put a PR about it um, out there, hopefully better than that German one that caused all this six months ago. <coughs> and that one I think is, I'm not gonna say unlikely, but I will say that that's the one when I've been told it, my immediate response has been, how on earth are you going to suddenly overnight add a big pile of Seagate and WD drives and not make it look like you guys have just been doing it for the old money, money, money? But, I mean, it's not impossible. And the ones, uh, you know, that's the one I've been told the least by people. And the third one is DSM 7.3. I talk about this in the largest Synology UK uh, solutions event video and the article. But uh, before the event took place, I found in several places uh, references on early PR uh, that DSM 7.3 was going to be unveiled at this event. Now, it wasn't. There was no mention of DSM 7.3 or indeed DSM 8. Uh, but some of the uh, indications I'd heard was that in DSM 7.3, that was when they were going to roll in uh, support of other hard drives be it that the whole unverified status thing uh, while still using them was going to be in place, or that that was when they were going to add a wave of Seagate and WD drives to kind of legitimise and justify that in this update, they then add a swath of drives from both parties. I think that allowed Synology to kind of have their cake and eat it a little bit in terms of adding those. The problem there, and I detail this in another video, so I'll abridge it a lot more here, is there are a lot of sysadmins that are not going to want to upgrade wholesale from DSM 7.2 into 7.3, particularly if they've got multi-site deployments. They're not going to want to do that. There are users that have been sitting on 2016, 17, 18 generation devices looking to upgrade certain devices at certain points in their multi-site deployment who are not going to be in love with upgrading those devices to 7.3 so they can use other hard drives and not updating these and vice versa. That's a big update. Think of Windows phase updates going into patch one, two, three, those big updates, they are meaningful, notwithstanding what's something that could be removed in DSM 7.3. Nevertheless, these are kind of the main three pathways. And let's face it, there isn't really any other choice the brand has got in terms of reversing this decision, because it's been a rough road for the last five, six months. And take my word for it, whichever one of these three pathways it ends up being based on what I'm being told, I'm gonna make a video about it because no one of these three options is perfect and no one of these three options is gonna reverse the last five to six months. Can you believe that? It was April when this was first uh, rolled out in that German press release. The last five to six months, it's not gonna be erased. All of the reviews, all of the things people have said about hard drive locking, all of the negativity online, and ultimately it comes down to what was the point of all of this. But that is for a future video. Another thing, I didn't quite know where to fit it into the video, so I've probably just ham-fistedly shoved it here, is to do with something I heard during Synology's Computex event and something that has bubbled to the surface once again, and that is that this whole idea of using Synology hard drives in a Synology NAS system, Synology some kind of, uh, providing some kind of support benefit moving forward there in additional warranty support years. Now, that is, again, something a lot of 
um, resellers actually recommended as well and something I have heard previously discussed. So if that happens, I think it'll be really interesting to see how Synology rolls that out. I know they're still discussing support contracts there in the US, but still nonetheless, I did think it was something worth highlighting as under discussion internally. That is the status quo right now in terms of hard drives. That is the status quo and everything I've heard off the record, which unfortunately it's so annoying I can't reference. Um, but that is where we are at. Please take me at my word, but that's really up to you. Thank you so much for watching. Let's discuss this more in the comments. But apart from that, I'll see you next time.